it's really exciting for both of us uh, to see the culmination of what we've been working on and to see how Washington State has been a leader in health care reform in so many ways with what has now passed Congress. And we're going to pass out a top ten list of various ways that we have provided leadership to the health reform effort and how we will benefit from the health reform effort that has now been passed by Congress. We have some immediate needs and we just passed again the resolution this morning, the joint con uh, concurrent resolution, uh, to take on the issue of implementation. Many of the provisions of this bill go into effect in the next 90 days. We can't wait till our next legislative session. We have to get on top of what's going on as quickly as possible. So we'll be meeting jointly, the House and Senate committees and their staff, and we'll invite other parties to the table from, from the agencies, from the insurance commissioner, from the community to see how best we can implement the various pieces. This is huge and it will impact tens of thousands of people, it will impact our economy, and we will all be better for it, in my opinion. And if we, the, one of the main things that we're, of course, centered on is the idea of the waiver, a Medicaid waiver, so that we can go ahead and get our GAU population, now Disability Lifeline population, and the basic health plan onto the Medicaid waiver so we can carry, cover those adults under 133% of poverty uh, on a Medicaid waiver, and that would save us, if, if we get it in place by January of this year, it's a, or January of the coming year, it'll be $50 million for the next biennium, it's up to $320 million, so that's a big reason for us to be excited about this, since we all know that the budget is what's keeping us here this long, and that uh, a little money would help us out. That's a um, lot of money. Yeah. And, and there are other pieces of, of the um, money trail that are very important to our state as well. Community health and rural health clinics will receive billions of dollars under this uh, reform package. Our Washington State Health a High Risk Pool res will receive about $30 million just in the next 90 days as they take on the issue of providing insurance to those with pre-existing condition. So there's all kinds of different ways that this will impact both our budget, our people, our providers. Uh, the Medicare uh, reimbursement that is going to be uh, equalized now so our providers and hospitals will not be disadvantaged to other states. That will be hundreds of millions in reimbursement that will be increased to our doctors and to our hospitals over the next few years that we have been having um, really just a, a, an equity um, issue for years because they've been reimbursed at such a low rate. So across the board, we have a lot of impacts here. Any anticipated costs with implementation? No. The expanded roles, won't that add costs? No. Well, the, the, way, the waiver is not to expand it. It's just to be able to get the Medicaid waiver for our, it would have a cap on it. This is a bridge funding. It's the Cantwell Amendment that was in the leg legislation. I mean, if you take the federal package as a whole, what's the net impact to the state budget? It's a plus it's a to plus. the state budget, and it's a great plus to our economy. So uh, it will cost less money to help fund health care for the helped. state. We will so be the able. Yes. Deficit in the future will be reduced because of this. Yes. The state deficit should be yes, yes because with absolutely uh, with the covering that Medicaid waiver. When we had the health care commission with the governor Gregoire four years ago, I mm -hmm. guess. Uh, what we found out is in this state, we are, it, our state is unusual in the number of people under 200% of poverty that are uninsured. Well, that's compared to Massachusetts when they did their health care reform, their uninsured was actually, uh, had, had more money than what ours did. So right. we will definitely be benefited by, by this uh, change with the Medicaid expansion. Have you done the analysis on the net impact? Well, for instance, 92,500 Washington State small businesses will be able to take advantage of the tax credit that is in the bill. So they will be able to uh, provide affordable health insurance for their employees and get a tax credit. Parents of 600,000 young adults will be able to extend their health coverage to their young adult up through the age of 26. So that's another huge population. You know, when your child graduates from college now and you lose coverage because the minute they're out of school they lose their group coverage under your parental uh, coverage, 
anyone with a pre-existing condition uh, in their child knows the kind of panic that sets in then. I just want to clarify that the lawsuit by the Attorney General against the health reform speaks of an unfunded mandate, a, a nearly impossible burden being placed on state budgets through the Medicaid expansion. Are you saying I, you know, it, you're I am telling saying, me the exact I opposite. Am exactly right. It is a looking Alice through the looking glass situation. Um, the, uh, there isn't an unfunded mandate, in my opinion. In my opinion, in fact, we are funded to accomplish what we have been doing with state dollars. And in fact, our citizens and our budget will be better off because of it. And one of the advantages of the with the waiver request, that we, bridge funding that we're looking for before health care reform actually goes into effect, is that we are going to get credit for on maintenance of effort of all the money that we have spent in, as a state in state only, and that's that's what's we're so excited about. And one other thing to keep in mind, our state has been really on the forefront of health care reform. We have already um, a health insurance exchange operational as of next January not 2014, but January of 2011. It will be open to small businesses and their employees and we'll be able to enroll something like 3,000, 4,000 people with subsidized health care in this exchange or marketplace that is envisioned in the federal health reform. That's ready to go because of Representative Cody's foresight over the last three years, truly. We have been working on this for three and four and five years to get to this point. Other states are way behind us, and that's why they had to take it out to 2014. We're ready to go. Um, okay, so how would this help the, um, the exchange program directly? Well, the, the ex we're going we'll probably need to make some changes to the to our statute on the exchange, mm -hmm. but uh, the exchange has right now got a grant from the federal government. And that's what Representative Kaiser, or Senator Kaiser, was referring to uh, was uh, the grant money and that, that we have had and that we will be starting to offer coverage next January for people on that. Uh, and hopefully we will be able to move a little quicker on that and, and get more people involved. And we passed legislation just this year, for example, to expand the small group insurance market to sole proprietors and single owners so that they too will be able to qualify under the exchange or the health insurance partnership as we call it in this exchange they will be able to get affordable health co uh, health coverage as as single operators or sole proprietors right now now those business owners are restricted to the individual market it's a very expensive place to get insurance right now and with limited availability right. of what you can buy right. too sure now, I was hoping you guys might be able to explain a little bit about the effect of the Cantwell Amendments on the basic health plan. Which, which part of it? Which yeah. part? Yeah, yeah there, there's <laughs> two different sections, and the one is the waiver that we were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, we, we refer to it as bridge funding, it's, uh, being, so that we would be able to be an early expander of a, up to 133, but, but we would have a cap, and so that's what we're negotiating and uh, the governor's office and uh, the department's already sent a letter in January with uh, talking about the waiver, and they've been in negotiations, and I think they have a meeting plan for next week. So we're very right. excited about that and, right. and hope to be able to move forward. And then the other part is the uh, idea that the state would be able to get the, instead of the subsidies going directly to individuals, that we would be able to take 95% of the money and offer the basic health plan to those individuals that are available, or, or, um, that subsidies are available to instead of having the subsidies that would go straight to the basic health plan. In addition, the language means that any other state could start up a basic yeah. health plan such as ours. That's very important. That basic health plan has been a successful program for the last 20 years. It's, it's provided comprehensive health care at an affordable amount for tens of thousands of our citizens and other states can now do it in a much uh, easier manner with this reform plan.